This was a very uncomfortable episode to watch. And I can imagine if it was uncomfortable for you and I, I can only imagine what it was for Miss Pamela. I'm going to give you my thoughts and reactions to the latest episode of Pam and Tommy, Pamela in Wonderland, right after the jump. with Hollywood I already did it. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. You know, this series is entering that weird area where it is starting to feel like filler. Um, those first four, three or four episodes are all like 47, 49 minutes. It had something to tell you, it told you it all. Now we're getting these things stretched out to 30 minute little increments. And it's a lot of repeating of what we were told. Like we know that this made Pamela uncomfortable. You know that this made uh, Tommy less uncomfortable. <laughs> um, so we're just now sort of rehashing that. This episode again, we don't get any more Rand. Um, it feels very much like. Here's what troubles me a little bit about this show. To make this show without Pamela and Tommy's uh, approval or, or or blessing or help, they use the article that Rand wrote to jumpstart this. And that's what those first three episodes were. And now Rand's gone. And so it's become a, a Pamela Lee biopic, basically, for the back half of the show. Which leaves a little bit to be desired because Pam had nothing to do with this. Unlike the Monica Lewinsky story, where Monica was actually an EP, was actually on set, had some sort of say into the realism and what actually took place, Pam doesn't. And so there's a lot of things that happened in this episode. And in the pre previous episode, the people have come back to say that like, that's not how that went. Or like Third Eye Block is like, we've never even met Miley Crew or, 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 or Tommy Lee. Like that scene is completely fabricated. And the director comes out and says, yeah, that scene's completely fabricated. I thought it would just look good in the shed. So now I'm starting to get in this weird world where I don't know what's real and what's actually not. And it is starting to become more sensationalist than it is to be some type of biopic. While I do think Pam went through a deposition, because we, we know that happened, and I'm sure there are tapes of this, um, when we start dealing with things about her past, if Pam's not here to tell you this, and Hugh is no longer here to tell you this, there's some things that just don't sit right with, like, why are we going down this road and giving information about things that we don't actually know that much of? Now, I could be wrong, they could have used some books, they could have used some, I don't know, I'm not aware enough of Pam to know that she, if she has a book. I'm sure she does by now. Uh, I'm sure Hugh has had a book and sort of piecemeal stories together, but it becomes really dangerous to try to recreate stories uh, off of things that may or may not have happened when these people, specifically Pamela, has already been through a lot. We're now reopening wounds. And she's not, again, she in real life is not in control of this destiny, her destiny or her story which is sort of the point of all of this, the weird, weird meta thing where Pam was showing that she lost onus of her power, her sexuality, the ability to make decisions. And in the real world, somehow, we've managed to take away her onus of making decision responsibilities. And she has to live through telling the story again. All that said, this episode is still pretty solid. Um, it does feel a bit repetitive, but we know what we're kind of getting with this. It's called Pamela in Wonderland. And Pam is um, first day of a dep deposition. And when I say it's utterly disgusting, it's, it's terrible. These uh, lawyers are attempting to just ask some of the most heinous and filthiest questions you can ever ask a person. And they're only asking it because one, she's a woman, and one, she's a woman of a certain stature. She has done. She has been nude, she's done all of these things, but they just go around the game. They basically accuse her of being a prostitute, saying that um, has she ever done sex acts for money? And they know that Tom Lee not, has had relationships with prostitutes, and Pam's like, no, she hasn't. He hasn't. And he equates her modeling in Playboy to as a sex act, and thus receiving money for that makes her a prostitute. Wow, that is a mad leap. Uh, it is a it is a wild thing that back then and it still happens to to, to this day is that women who choose to do any type of uh, modeling nude or otherwise but any type of nude modeling is considered to be pornographic um, when those are two completely separate things you can be you can be, you can be a stripper 
not pornographic or, or prostitute and be a nude model, not a, not a stripper or a pornographic actress. There are different levels to all of this, but men have made it, especially back then, but still to this day, have made all of this under one umbrella and thus um, have tried to make it out. She is not a person who is, she has already given up the owners of her body to the world through Playboy and she doesn't really get to get that onus of it during during penthouse and they they allege that she is doing this to sort of get back at Hugh for not giving her the money that they may sh have uh, thought about and that's why she's sort of leaked the tape herself to penthouse just just some just terrible thing um they have an entire situation where they ask her about her giving um oral sex on the highway in the car, was like, did you want to be seen? Because you know, truckers above you could see you. And she's like, I, it was in the moment. Like, it, she was a young person in the moment having fun, but they are taking it piece by piece. Where that gets even messier is they actually bring in the tape and have her watch the tape and go bit by bit over the tape to see her. Like, do you know those two people? Do you know those people? Meanwhile, we all know that they know that that's Tommy. But you're sitting in a room with Pamela and the deposition person who's, who's typing that I forgot what they call what they actually call them. Um, are the only women? It's a black woman, Pamela, and then a room full of dudes who are watching the sex tape with Pamela in person and seeing her react and just become viscerally ill, like sick to her stomach. Um, it is uncomfortable to watch it is sad to watch and uh, probably the only thing that in this episode that is 100% honest is there are tapes and, and things that sort of show that this deposition took place it's a rough watch while this deposition is going we do get intercut scenes of flashbacks of Pam uh, first starting off modeling which all of this is this is where the episode kind of gets into the weird thing of like I don't Sure, I guess this is this happened, um, and we do know that there there are points of it because you have a poster where she's in the little Bats blue girl um, in Canada. She goes to a football game with her then boyfriend, and is on like the you know the kissing cams that happen. She gets in one of those things and uh, gets discovered. Uh, little Bats guy because she's wearing a little Bats blue shirt. She's got little Bats in her hand. She goes and a VIP from little Bats comes up and says, "Hey, have you ever tried my line?" She's like, "Wait, what?" And her boyfriend's like. This dude, that's a, a wild game to attempt to try and play. Um, he, she does it, gets on a poster, love her, and Hugh sees her poster, Hugh Hefner, the Playboy. And he calls her. He says, hey, I'd like you to come on out and do a test shoot. And she's freaking out. She's like, oh my God, that would be amazing. That'd be great. Her boyfriend at the time is not very supportive. Um, he, he's like, he doesn't want his girl's tits all over the world, which is a fair... Uh, which is a fair response to have as a male. However, it comes off as angry and it comes off as like, you can do this or you're not going to do this as opposed to, I don't want to, I don't want you to do this and maybe we should not be together type of whatever, whatever. There are other roles to go than the way that he went because he didn't throw something at her. And at that point she made the illness like, no, I'm out. Like, this is for me. This is not for you. She wants to do it. And therefore, anything that he says is, is moved at that point. They're not married. They're, they're, they're just dating at that point. Even if they were. Just still her decision. She takes off, uh, and then we see a scene where she and her mom go to the Playboy Mansion, and she has her first shoot, and uh, she feels like Alice in Wonderland. Thus, the episode title, Pamela in Wonderland. Um, she was a little uncomfortable at first, but then she gets into it. She finds her groove, and she, she takes hold of her sexuality as it goes along. And then she and Hugh have a bit of a conversation, and, uh, and Hugh says, don't let anybody ever put a dollar amount on you. You are a goddess, you are a gift, and you should always own that. Who knows if this conversation happened? I do know that Hugh and Pam had a very uh, father and daughter type of relationship. It sounds weird considering that he made this entire magazine about her being naked, her and other women being naked. But unlike some of the other ones where he has consistently slept with, it does not appear that that ever happened with Pam. He just respected her and admired her and thought she was like one of the best visual things, women, that he's ever laid his eyes on. And that's where that conversation uh, ends. And then we get a, a scene of Pam, because in this test shoot, she is not um, enhanced yet in her breast. And so we do have a scene with her mom 
<laughs> after the bed we were matching, I was like, oh my God, it felt so good. But we were going down the match and every girl was enhanced and all of this. And her mom's like, you are perfect the way you are. But if you want to make yourself more perfect, I am, I am with you. Um, it is good to see that her mom was supportive. It was one of the few people that was in her corner. Again, I don't know if this conversation happened that way. I don't know if she was sitting up in bed one day. It was like, hey, you know what I need? Bigger boobs. Now with me having the Motley Crue third eye blind thing actively in my brain as not happening, and the director has come out to say that it's not happening, I am now questioning everything that has what happens in the show. But it does still make for a pretty solid episode. It's, we return back to the deposition, and Pamela sort of puts her foot down. Um, she takes a break, a moment, and goes to the restroom to... to to sort of dry heat and, and vomit because she's viscerally ill. It's also not clear if she is pregnant or is um, still having the fallout from being pregnant because she has a moment where she looks at her stomach. Um, I think it just reminds her because there's a point where we also flash back. They have, keep asking about the sex tape. I'm like, why would you do this? Why would you make a porn tape? And she's like, I didn't. They kept the tape. Um, according to this flashback, they kept the tape because it was a sign of when they think they may have conceived. And so it becomes more of a family thing for them. Still private. It wasn't made, never made for the idea of releasing. Whereas because she has done Playboy, everyone keeps thinking that this tape was released on purpose or snuck out and leaked on purpose. She goes to the bathroom, and probably the best moment of this episode comes when the person who is uh, um, transposing the entire deposition, the, the woman, the only other woman in the room, said, well, hey, yo, I, for what it's worth, I've been to a lot of depositions. This, but this is, and she doesn't finish the sentence, but you just know that, she's like, this is a lot. They've gone through every inch of her, her body, her person, her mind, um, for reasons that just don't, they don't make sense. There's none, none of this has to happen for what it is that they're trying to um, achieve. So they get back to the room and her lawyer is like, AO, it's five, we're done here. Uh, and he's doing it as a, like, we've had enough. She needs a break, let's take a moment. Um, it's at that moment then that Pamela realizes that that's, this is just day one of the deposition. And, they're like, okay, cool. Well, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And Pam takes a stand. She's like, nah, that's not. Call the lawyer over. He's like, hey, we're not doing a day, a day two. I'm done. I am done here. She is taking, put her flag in the sand, says, we're not doing this anymore. The lawyer's like, well, there's going to be some issues. She's like, I don't care how you have to do it. If I don't, I'm going to fire you. If you don't, I'm going to fire you and get, grab a new lawyer. And the lawyer's like, all right, cool. And those lawyers all walk off to kind of go create a deal. And it's in that moment that you kind of like see like Pam, like, all right, I'm standing up for myself. I am done. I am done. Feels good in that brief moment for all the hell that she's gone through. The problem is we all know that on the other side of that door, when that is over, it is not going to get better for Pam. Um, and it's only going to go get worse for both her in, in regards to this and in regards to Tommy. It's very telling that this is an episode that does not have Tommy in it at all. We know we left the last episode and Tommy, other than the flashback. But we left that episode before and time. It's like, hey, I don't know why they went on me. It's not that big of a deal. This just goes to show you further. This is sort of what the whole point of this series has been. Once we got past the actual procurement of the tape. To show you how different the worlds are for Tommy a male via the sex tape. And Pam a female via the sex tape. She's going through a lot of just torment and, and, and fine combing of every single piece of her life that she's ever done um, as a woman. Not necessarily because of a mistake, but because something that was private to her got out and now she has to explain and over every piece of her life in a room of men who, in addition to feeling like they have some type of power over her to get to her ask this question, they're also getting off on this because she is a very attractive and sexual woman. So they're, they're getting twofold. They're like, ah, uh, it's a weird kind of, like these lawyers are doing this weird sex game, almost rape type of thing where they're like, I own power over you. You have to answer these questions, but I can still watch this tape 
with you in the room and you have to go over it piece by piece and tell me why you like to have come in your mouth and why you like to do stuff on a boat. It, it's demeaning, demoralizing, and, and, and one of the hardest things, when you start adding humanity to this, this stops just being about a sex tape. This starts being about a woman who has had everything sort of just taken away from her. And I'm hoping, I do hope that on the back end of this, this series that they do spin an episode about everything that Pamela is doing now in current time with their fil philanthropic work. Um, if people have not, and it's a weird thing because they always do this when a show comes out. It's now sort of multiple people are making stories and whatnot, but there was a, a TNT um, story about Pam and Tommy that just came out that basically made everything that happens in the show a lot. Rand did not have as much to do with the, the, the delivery methods of the sex tape as Uncle Milton did. Uncle Milton had way more into it. Neither here nor there, that's a side story. You can watch it if you want. I bring it up to say that there is um, a lot that Pam has sort of rose in like a phoenix on the back end of this to kind of make a better life for herself. She, she still has to answer questions about it, but she takes it with grace. And she is now at a point where she's doing using it as other things because at the end of it, it's a very wild way of bullying that all of these men are doing towards her. Um, for her to have to start answering all of these questions, it is good that she has found a way to make something, to take something out of this. Um, I think this episode's good. I think we are getting into a very, a very much of a point where some of these could have episodes, back end episodes could have been pushed together. When you get 30 episodes and 29 minute episodes versus 47 and 44, these stories could have been put together. Like this, that last episode, getting the deposition, and then this, I know you wanted to hit harder on the, the actual deposition, but you could have pushed, pushed them together and cut out maybe like 10 minutes and made a 45 minute episode. I think we're stretching this out. I think um, once we got away from Rand and Rand's no longer the, the thesis, we have put ourselves in a corner where we're making a Pam bio without Pam. And as dirty as the deposition felt, this is starting to feel as dirty because we're now treading down that same path where she doesn't have any power over what this is. It's weird. Well, what did you guys think about the most recent episode of Pam and Tommy, Pamela in Wonderland? Go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at HollywoodADI. Or you can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast with the same name as on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other players podcast. We're there. We currently have an episode about Uncharted up, and uh, we have our spinoff show, You Can't Do That Anymore, where we talk about, fittingly, with Penthouse being a part of this, Caligula. Um, it is a movie that can only be believed if you've seen it. <laughs> but like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.